ladies and gentlemen of the Gamer to the Com video, we're going to be discussing virtual reality, primarily from the PC perspective, more specifically from comments from NVIDIA. Now, we all know that virtual reality is touted to be the next big thing. We've had many big things in gaming. We've had, of course, the, the move from just 2D to 3D graphics, and then we've started to have more shading in our 3D graphics and they've become more realistic as we've had improvements to geometry and lighting and everything else under the sun. Now virtual reality is said to be the next frontier, it's supposed to be the next immersive experience and chances are that if you've been following the gaming industry for the last year or so, you've probably heard everyone giving their two cents on this one, whether it's AMD, whether it's Nvidia, whether it's Sony, whether it's Oculus Rift or whomever, someone has at least an opinion on what the virtual reality future will be. But NVIDIA, in a rather large interview, has decided to stop commenting on what it will be like for us as gamers and how many of us will actually be able to really enjoy the virtual reality experience. So first things first, they have stated that there are around 13 million PCs right now which are powerful enough on the market to be able to run virtual reality to a decent degree. However, um, obviously kind of uh, trumping, uh, trumpeting their own horn, if you will, they are stating that if developers were to utilize NVIDIA's own Gameworks virtual reality software, which makes virtual reality uh, processing more efficient, and we'll discuss why in just a second, that number would around double. It would go to around 25 million. Now, before we start delving super deep into this, it is worth noting, uh, before anyone else mentions it, that a lot of companies have their toes dipped firmly into the VR market space. AMD have liquid VR for the sake of argument, which offers many of the benefits that um, NVIDIA's do, but they're going more the open source route, which could be kind of cool. And we all know that Sony, of course, are pushing their own platform. So really, this is just a perspective. So what are NVIDIA themselves doing with virtual reality? Well, the first thing, according to them, is that they're working to build fast GPUs. The quote would be, our Maxwell architecture has specific capabilities and features that make it very fast for VR. We have some technology that increases performance up to 50% in VR applications. Software-wise, we're making sure the out-of-box experience for customers is perfect. We want to be the first VR experience everyone gets when the headset comes to be out with a good one. No stutter, no lag, our GeForce Experience software and our game-ready drivers are core of making sure that experience is delivered. And we're working with all of the VR ecosystems through our SDK called Gameworks, VR on the side of the customers and design VR on the professional side. That helps headset manufacturers get lower latency and plug and play compatibility. Now, as an aside, I think that's extremely important. What you don't want is everyone having a different virtual reality experiences or frustrating virtual reality experiences because this is a new market at the end of the day. This is kind of the same problem that Valve are having with the Steam OS in that not all games support it. So it's really, really, really difficult for them to say, yeah, all you need is a, you know, a Steam machine and you're good to play any game. You can't do that. That's one of the reasons that, of course, many people are choosing the options of actually putting a Windows-based OS on a Steam, Steam machine, essentially, which is a oh, multi-boot scenario, which is not really ideal. So to really get this off the ground, it's not just going to be a case of, well, we've got a really powerful GPU and you've got a really good headset and that's the end of it. It has to be a very smooth experience for customers. So how does NVIDIA's SDK do this? Well, they have applications for developers to help scale across multiple GPUs. For headsets, context priority helps them switch faster between tasks which cut latency. Direct mode gives them a direct interface to the GPU to provide better plug and play compatibility. But perhaps the biggest um, feature is known as multi-res shading. Now, if you've been following along with RGT for some time, you'll know that we've discussed this previously, but I'm gonna reiterate it for now because it is being, I guess you could say, explained by NVIDIA. I'll read out their exact quote. Using our architecture to accelerate VR rendering, helps you understand a little bit of how VR rendering works 
if you take a phone. It's basically a VR display. With Samsung Gear VR, it's literally a VR display, but the display in the PC's headsets are basically cell phone displays as well. If you were to take it and hold it to your face though, you can't really see anything. Your eyes can't focus on the display when it's close to your face or your eyes. The headset guys use lenses. You view the display through a lens and it helps your eyes focus. It gives you a depth of field. The issue with a lens though is it, disport, it distorts the image. When you look through this grid, you see this pincushion effect warping what's underneath it. The GPU accommodates that by pre-distorting an image, so when you view it under the lens, it looks normal. The distortion meets the reverse distortion, so your eyes can focus on the image very close to your face. With good, with good depth, your eyes can focus on the image, and that's how VR optics works. The challenge with the GPUs today is they don't render these distorted images natively. They render your typical PC display, rectangular images. Then you have to post-process pass these through distorted images, so that's why we're rendering a 3K image in a reticle shape and then distorting it in post-process pass. That black area is a pixel that gets thrown away in that pass. If you look at how optics works, there's the center of the image basically as a one-to-one -one mapping. In our architecture, we're able to divide the image up into nine regions to scale each region based on the needed pixel density in that region. So we don't need as many pixels, it's gonna get distorted down anyway. We could draw this image as nine different images very quickly as if it was one image. This allows us to draw something a bit closer to the final distorted image and saves drawing all of those pixels. Now I know that was a pretty damn long quote, but I did want to put that in there because I think it's kind of an interesting under to understand how that works. Essentially, if you've ever looked at a headset natively and you've not actually put the optics in i have because i was really curious to see how it looked and you could basically tell yeah it's pretty much like just holding it as bloody smartphone display to your eyes so what about costings this is actually a really bloody long quote so i'm not going to go through the whole thing but what they would suggest of course is one of their own brand of graphics cards which is kind of like no duh but they suggest something along the lines of a gtx 970 which is around 300 us dollars so what they are saying is that they're working with oem partners to build pcs based on this at around a thousand dollars so if you're new to the pc market if you don't own a pc you can probably buy a good you know pretty solid virtual reality rig for around a thousand US dollars and yes if you probably were willing to do some of it yourself if you would you know happy to scour eBay if you're happy to scale you know do some configurations and look around forums and that type of stuff you probably knock some money off of that if I'm totally honest with you on the other hand if you already own a decent PC which a lot of people do I mean it's not too much of a stretch now to say that the average CPU is fairly decent in most desktops. Really, it's the GPU which is probably the thing that lets a lot of people down. So you can simply plonk down a good chunk of change on the GTX 970 or an equivalent and you'll be pretty much good to go in terms of virtual reality. Of course, all of these prices do omit one of the most key components and you've probably noticed that yourself yeah you do need to buy the display so obviously that will depend upon what manufacturer you end up going with and all of the other uh, you know usual caveats but it's not a massive layout i mean it's not cheap by any stretch of the imagination like a thousand us dollars is not really something you find under the cushion of your couch but it's also maybe not quite as expensive as what many of us had predicted a couple of years back i mean i remember thinking to myself back in 2013 2012 when virtual reality was first being murmured wow this, this thing's gonna be bloody expensive but it's probably not i mean i think it does depend on the type of gamer you are for the sake of argument let's say that you're happy to flip between virtual reality and high resolution displays like 4k monitors then yes your price goes up quite a bit Let's say you play games like StarCraft or you play games which don't really lend themselves to virtual reality, then you're probably going to want to spend more money because, once again, you're probably going to want a, a decent 1440p display setup and so on. 
on the other hand, if you're kind of just saying to yourself, eh, you know, I don't mind just playing on like a large screen TV, for the sake of argument, a 1080p screen, or you're happy to use your TV or something like that, and you want to use virtual reality display for those games which do work really well on VR, then it becomes a little cheaper. Personally, I'm probably more in camp two, because I'm I'd prefer to generally play games on a larger screen with slightly lower resolution, typically. Um, that's not always the case, it does really depend on the game. But I would rather play on that, or like a TV screen, that type of thing. And then games which do immerse, uh, have a VR experience, FPS, that type of thing, I'd rather play on a Oculus. But that's my opinion now, based on my thoughts and opinions on how it's probably gonna work. I guess the big elephant in the room is the PlayStation 4. Sony are touting that they've got around 30 million for the PlayStation 4's installed base, but there are some problems because obviously just because you've got 30 million doesn't mean that everyone is going to be buying, of course, the headset and all the other bits and pieces you need to play it, just like the PC, just because you've got 13 or 25 million or whatever bloody amount. By the way, those numbers are just NVIDIA's numbers. So, for the sake of argument, 13 million is just those with NVIDIA graphics cards. It's not taken into account AMD's graphics cards or Intel graphics cards, because obviously NVIDIA, for this particular example, does not want to count that. But, you know, it's still, still the same deal because Sony have a lot of PlayStation 4s, but it really depends on how their virtual reality experience lives up in terms of the titles. I don't care the quality of the headset here. Now, I know you might criticize me for saying that, but at the end of the day, it's really the software experiences which make the game or make the device worth it. It's the chicken and egg scenario. It's like you can have a really good piece of hardware but no one's developing really worthwhile experiences and I don't like to use the Kinect as an example because I think the Kinect just was never really sold to me I I never really liked the idea of motion controls so even when the original Wii was announced I was like Ugh, no motion no and playing it some I I would say that my stance slightly changed and I became a little more willing to accept and play with it, but I still wasn't particularly infused by it. Whereas virtual reality, I'm more I'm more open to it, which is something I wasn't, by the way, around a year ago, until I really started to see some of the technology and I tried to DK2 myself. I wasn't really sure about the whole virtual reality technology, but now, yeah, I can see that I would probably buy um, PlayStation VR. The question is, what are the games going to be like on the PlayStation VR? Unfortunately, we don't have an exact bit of information. Now, we do know that, of course, there is a breakout box for the PlayStation 4, but from what we've been told, that does not handle any processing. So, by which I mean, it doesn't increase the resolution, it doesn't increase the frame rates or anything like that. Yes, I know it technically does the whole um, image warping and that type of thing for an external display, but it's not going to, for the sake of argument, increase the PlayStation 4's GPU performance, that type of thing. Now, the reason I bring that up is because essentially it will mean that there is less performance, less hardware to really push those uh, frames per second. And as we all know, I mean, I've been playing Bloodborne. I'm really loving Bloodborne on the PlayStation 4 at the moment. Really good game, by the way, even if it's bloody rage-inducing. It's one of those games where it starts out with, like, a bloody cliff face and gets a bit easier as you start getting better abilities. And uh, you start getting slightly later into the game so you can do better farming. But at the start, it's really freaking frustrating, especially the Blood-Starved Beast. Anyway... You can tell that the PS4 at times really struggles, like you can feel the frame rate chug. There are times that I'm pretty damn sure, and I haven't done like a frame rate testing on it, but I'm pretty damn sure when I was facing the Bloodstarved Beast, ironically, the frame rate would tank. I mean, I, I don't know what it went to because obviously I was eyeballing it, but it felt like 20 FPS or something like that because obviously the game is gargantuan in scope, you know, you're you're seeing a lot of enemies or a lot of animation, massive draw distances, an open world, 
generally speaking. So it's really taxing the hardware. So the same thing for the PC. I mean, to really utilize virtual reality, NVIDIA are quoting that you need a PC. It's around seven times more powerful than a basic PC. And a basic PC now to be able to run at like 1080p, 30 FPS, it does not take much. It really doesn't. I mean, you can, to be honest with you, you can use something like a GTX 950 or a used graphics card of whatever description. I mean, even a GTX 960 will pretty much run anything at night at 1080p at 60 and they're sure really piling on the MSAA and that type of stuff. I'm reviewing an R9 280X at the moment, which is around the same price point, around 200 US dollars ish. And it's, it's ridiculous the level of performance right now that you can get for quite cheap. I mean, I'm playing games like The Witcher at ridiculous frame rates at 1080p, all settings maxed. I'm playing games like Mad Max at like 90 frames per second at 1080p with all graphics options max. So I'm not saying this to advertise the card because at the end of the day, it's, you know, I don't get any, uh, no compensation to me from saying that to you. I'm, you know, I'm not sponsors or anything, but I'm just saying that you don't really need that high, you know, GTX 980 Ti or some, or a Fury X to be able to push at 1080p. So if all you're going for is like the general, PC gaming, you don't need huge hardware to be able to do that, but virtual reality is going to be a bit different to really push those frames per second, you will need a higher end card, so it's going to be basically, I spent the last five minutes rambling, and pretty much what I'm saying to you is that it's going to be very interesting how it all takes shape, now we're entering into 2016 with the new GPUs, because to be honest with you, the current GPUs are pretty good, but let's face it, I think we all want to see the next generation of hardware now um, from NVIDIA, we want to see it from AMD, we want to see just what the hell is going to happen. And to be honest, I'm, I'm okay with virtual reality being either the best thing ever, or I'm happy with it sucking. Because either way, we're in a pretty damn good position. Um, I think we're in an amazing position as gamers right now. Yes, there are the whole, you know, microtransaction bullshit, but generally, we're in a pretty damn sweet position. We've got excellent hardware, no matter what platform you're choosing to game on, whether it's the Xbox One, whether it's the PlayStation 4, whether it's the PC. You've got some really good exclusives on any platform. If you're a PC gamer and you've got no bloody interest in virtual reality, which is fair enough, I understand some people, you know, they just don't care about it. Then, you know, you've got 4K displays, you've got 10-bit um, color coming in, you've got FreeSync and G-Sync, which are becoming pretty much standard now on a lot of displays, which is amazing. It means that you've got 144 hertz and higher um, refresh rates, you know, it's just, it's really great. And it means that the prices are also coming down, which once again is absolutely fantastic. It means that we can game, if you're a PC gamer and you happen to play at 1080p or 1440p, you don't need to go out and spend atrocious amounts of money on like a, a triple SLI GTX 980 setup just to be able to run those games, which is really cool. And uh, long may it continue, I say. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. So it's been a bit of a rambly one, but yeah, it was a thing. It, it's a good discussion, don't you know? Let me know what you're looking forward to. Like... Is virtual reality something you care about, even if it's the PlayStation 4 or the, you know, PC or the Xbox 5 million when it comes out or whatever? Or don't you really care about it? I don't know. I think it's going to be kind of cool, but for me, my personal opinion, virtual reality, pretty sweet for certain games like horror games, um, FPS... Aside from that, I'm really not interested in it. That's just my personal opinion. But I think for the titles that it does work with, I've tried it on games like uh, Half-Life 2, and I, I thought it was amazing. So let's just see how it goes, shall we? Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.